Cheltenham. 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 Gloucester. Gloucester. No, 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 no. I know it's spelt Gloucester, but we pronounce it Gloucester. Like Worcester. Leicester. And Leicester, yes. Why? Well, it's just the way we do it. You don't have to know why, do you? Just so long as you get it right. Hmm? Now then, everybody, once again. Cheltenham. 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 Gloucester. 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 Gonna take off your coat? difference between bin and pin. Take a piece of paper, put it in front of your mouth. When you say bin, the paper shouldn't move. When you say pin, the paper should move, right? Bin. Pin. Good morning, Mrs. Franklin. Good morning, Mr. Hopkins. It's hot, isn't it? A flaming June, Mrs. Franklin. How Shirley today? Oh, much the same, really. Well, the change in the weather doesn't make any difference to her. No, not really. Oh, it's very difficult. I should know. I nursed my husband for ten whole years. Oh, he's free. Just walk in. Liberty Hall. Right. Come. Hi, Bernard. Turk on a business course. Yeah, usual sort of thing. Can't speak a word. The intensive, then? Well, more conversational. Just take your time. Company's paying. Right. It is business, Bernard. I mean, we want to do the best for them, of course, but the bills have to be paid. Start with conversation, anyway. You'll probably need the intensive care later. But get him to sign up first. When will I meet him? Well, he's not free any evening till after nine. Is that a problem? I mean, with your wife and everything, I can always ask Madeline. No, no. It's all right. I can make arrangements. Madeline's a heavy enough schedule already. It'll have to be at his hotel. He's called, um, Narsi or 
Nazi or Nasiri, <laughs> something like that. Anyway, Mrs. Franklin has a printout of all the details. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Now, who can't make it? Well, Miss Davis is off today. She's a bad throat. And Mrs. Brady had to leave early to go to the dentist, morning, Madeline. she said. And Mr. Firth, Mr. James, and Miss Cassidy sent apologies. They're all at important meetings. And John's taking an extra class for the Japanese. Thank you, Mrs. Franklin. Right, the main item is the question of offering more classes in the evenings. We've turned away 18 foreign businessmen in the last six weeks. They want the evening classes. We need the revenue. So I have a couple of proposals. One, we expand the evening timetables. Well, I can't. It just doesn't suit. You'll have time off in lieu. Well, the children are at school. I hardly see them as it is. Madeline. No problem for me, but then I have no commitments. What's the alternative? You said a couple. Reduce the six form slackers. And replace them with the uh, foreign sector. We've had a great many successes with the slackers, as you call them, Julian. And if I may say so, that's been a benefit to your reputation as well as the schools. Uh, perhaps if we were all to offer two more evenings, we could have the best of both worlds. I have to agree with Madeline, Julian. I don't think we should neglect the home market. It won't be easy for you, Mr. Hopkins. Uh really makes no difference day or evening. If I have more time in the day, I can get the shopping done, that sort of thing. It won't do. It's not in our contracts. I think you'll find it is. So, we're all agreed. That's uh, more evening classes on Rota. Fine. Bernard, thanks for your support back there. It was really helpful. Not at all. Look, um, I have a late tutorial tonight. Would you... I mean, do you have time for a drink? Before, I mean. That would be lovely. A hard six at screens. <laughs> What's the matter, Paul? Is the door locked? accents, he arose, ethereal, flushed, 
And like a throbbing star seen mid the sapphire heaven's deep repose, into her dream he melted. As the rose blendeth its odor with the violet, solution sweet. Mm. Meantime, the frost wind blows like love's alarum, pattering the sharp sleet against the window panes St. Agnes' moon hath set. It is dark, quick patter with the floor blown sleet. This is no dream, my bride, my Madeleine. It is dark, the icid gusts still rave and beat. No dream, alas, alas, and woe is mine. Porphyro will leave me here to fade and pine. Cruel, what traitor could thee hither bring? I curse not. For my heart is lost in thine, though thou forsakest a deceived thing, a dove forlorn and lost with sick and pruned wing. Oh. My Madeline, sweet dreamer, lovely bride, say, may I be for I thy vassal blessed, thy beauty shield, heart shaped, and vermeil dyed. Oh. Silver shrine, here will I take my rest after so many hours of toil and quest. A famished pilgrim saved by miracle. <laughs> Hello, Paul. How are you? And he's giving it everything he's got. He's urging his mount on, and the whips are out. Yes. Oh, yes, they're pushing very, very hard for the line. It's close. It's, it's, it's going to be a photo finish. Oh, and it's neck and neck. <laughs> or should I say thigh and thigh? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, and the stallion has won it <laughs> by a short head. <laughs> I didn't say you two could come. Well, we haven't had that pleasure. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. <laughs> Who let you in? Your mum. Well, she didn't let you all in. And what difference does that make? Well, she wouldn't. Oh, did um, Miss Mummy wouldn't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. <gasps> yes, you bloody do. <laughs> <laughs> Still seeing Debbie, Grigson? Yeah. Does she put out for you? What, her? Oh, likely. Tight-assed virgin, if ever I saw one. <laughs> does she, Grigson? <sighs> I'm asking. Mind your own bloody business. Bloody virgin's convention. You'd be better off buying it. From a tart, stupid. <laughs> Look, cut it out, would you? That's enough. Oh, shut it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. no, no, yeah. Please, please, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. about to have a bath. Thought you were a late night bather. Better of fitting it in when I can. Tea? Yeah, thanks. How's Laura? Is she around? No. New boyfriend. Hello, Madeline. Hi. His name's Terry. They're out for a meal. She didn't tell me about him. She's grown up. More secrets. Used to tell her auntie everything, didn't she? You're not working, Keith? Rest day. Oh, I've got to get some ciggies. Want anything? Uh, no, thanks. Catch you later. You haven't told me anything yet. There's nothing to tell. We're going for a drink, that's all. He's nice. 
How? Different? Gentle? Well, you like him. Yeah. Could you fancy him? Maybe. But he fancies you. <laughs> John would have been 39 today. God, how long is it? Seven years and three weeks. You can't mourn forever. I know. You weren't even lovers. You didn't sleep together. So? So what's the problem? So I don't sleep with everyone I meet. You don't sleep with anyone. How's your lesson? My tutorial was fine. We're doing Keats. We're always doing Keats. The Romantics have a lot to say to us. It's just as well the fees they charge. <laughs> well, I, I think I'll lie down for a bit. Don't forget your driving lesson. I'll bring you a cup of tea before I go. I'm going out later. Oh. I'm meeting someone. Oh, yes, Debbie, the star of Boots Checkout. That'll be a stimulating evening, Paul. Mind the carpet. I knew you'd be on time, Paul. Should we go then? The bus should be here any minute. They're always on time when you don't want them to be. A bit like my supervisor, she was at me again today. I, I was only five minutes late. My dad had a flat tire and I had to walk. It'd be nice if you got a car, wouldn't it, Paul? You think you'll get one when you pass your test? I like being driven. It makes me feel important. Anyway, you don't get wet if it's raining. with all this stuff and he bought the wrong things all together and yesterday we had an old lady walk out without paying what happened oh dave caught her she was ever so upset how are your classes then oh they're great my teacher's good she's really good we're doing keats oh have you ever read him can't say i have well, he's a romantic. Oh, I love romantic stories. There's one I'm reading at the moment. This fellow, he goes to Crete on holiday. I'd love to go there. All that sun, you get really brown. Of course, I'd have to take a lot of sun time lotion. You've got nice eyes. Thanks. Are you sure you don't want a gin in there? No, a bit of lemon's fine, thanks. What's yours? Whiskey. Oh. You're nice. Oh, I love that girl. I'm doing it with one of my students at the moment. Um, she danced along with vague, regardless eyes, anxious, her lips, her breathing swift and short. <laughs> um, but Trist from the moonlight stands he and implores all saints to give him sight of Madeline. <laughs> What's wrong? I wish I had more literature classes. Julian's given me so many of the language groups. Mm, he does that to the newcomers, I'm afraid. He's seeing how far he can push you. That's his style. We're going. Whatever's the matter? You still want to see that film, don't you? We'll just get there. Oh. What a nice surprise. Hello. 
Uh, this is Debbie, Debbie Wilkinson. This is Miss Seven, she's my teacher. Oh, Hello. pleased to meet you. Where are you two off to then? To the pictures. It's a love story with Patrick Swayze. Well, don't let me stop you. Have a lovely evening. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Yes, bye bye. Oh, wait for me. Uh, two glasses of dry wine, please. Oh, I just bumped into one of my students. Never mind, I don't think he saw you. Well, what if he did? I just hate people knowing my business. Mrs. Franklin is such a gossip. I know how you feel. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> So what have I done? Nothing. I haven't done anything. Mrs. Roberts, problem with her schedule. Okay. Mrs. Roberts, what's the problem? how Child Harold is described. Given Byron's reputation, it's inevitable that he should be identified with it. See, it's hard to imagine now what an impact this poem had. This was something new, a new kind of hero. It was an anti-hero, if you like. You know, the first two cantos made Byron famous overnight. What, just for a poem? It wasn't just a poem. You must remember there was nothing other than writing in those days. No television, no videos, no rock music. This was something new. It was rather daring. And it was profoundly exciting. Can you imagine what that was like? Yeah. Here was someone who wanted to indulge every sensual experience. He was willing to try anything, to do anything to revive his tired palate, as it were, regardless of whether it was self-destructive or not. You mean... A bit like glue sniffing? Well, not exactly. With pleasure drugged, he almost longed for woe. And e'en for change of scene would seek the shades below. You see, he was even prepared to go down to hell for new excitement. Listen. Um, here. Why, at the very height of desire and human pleasure, does there mingle a certain sense of doubt and sorrow? He's recognizing that pain is the very center of pleasure. However deeply he throws himself into experience, he can never escape from himself. Then you're saying it's no good. There's no point in trying to do anything. 
What do you mean? Because whatever you do, whatever you want, if you get it, which you probably won't, then you're only going to be disappointed or hurt. Is that what you found, Paul? Pretty much. Paul, you mustn't think like that. Not at your age. Life is, is just beginning. You must be open to experience, ready for anything, not cynical, hungry. I am hungry. Oh, that's good, that's right. What's the matter, Paul? Is it a girl? Are you in love with her? Have you told her? Talk to her. Tell her. Very attractive, you know. Don't undervalue yourself. Be confident. You'll be flattered, I'm sure. <laughs> you mustn't idealize women, you know. We want love. We feel desire just like you. Just take her hand, look her in the eyes, and say, I love you. <sighs> Debbie will love it. Debbie. I met her in the pub, remember? Yeah, what? But what you don't realize is... Ah, just your schedule for next week. I was in the office. Uh, Mrs. Franklin asked me. Thank you. OK, then. See you. Enlightenment has to take a break, Julian. <laughs> I think we should have dinner sometime soon. You know, discuss next year's applicants and uh, your ideas for the new scheduling, of course. That would be lovely. A working dinner. I'm sure the staff would appreciate it. When are you thinking of? Oh, uh, you know, quite soon. Take this one, please. Didn't you get one like this before? Someone stole it. Imagine. Hey, I've been looking for a bed sit. I'm sure my grant will just about stretch to it. Mum's not at all keen because she doesn't trust me. Well, trust has got nothing to do with it. Yeah. There's a couple of lagers in the fridge. Be a love, will you? Go on. He's really getting up my nose. Do you want to come to lunch on Thursday? Yeah. Tell me all about, um... Terry. Terry. <laughs> <clears throat> right, I suppose I'd better go. <laughs> I'll see you on Thursday, and thanks. Uh, now, don't you be too late. What does she mean, thanks? We're meeting for lunch on Thursday. She is. I know she is. <laughs> well, they all do. You did. Well, that's different. Why? Well, Keith doesn't like it either. Well, so what? He's not her father. Anyway, have you asked her? Of course not. I'm not completely suicidal. Well, do you want me to ask her? Oh, no, leave it. Keith hates the way she tells you things. Oh, what a pity. Never mind. Here. Now, you have a lovely dinner. I hope he's worth it. Who? Spoil sport. She always was. Bye. 
Bye bye, sweetie. Have a lovely evening. for a while. I have an appointment with Dr. Pearson. Well, what are you doing this evening? Meeting Debbie. Oh, well, if you must, you must, but don't be too long, dear, please. Have you done all your homework? Assignment, Mum. Yes, it's all finished. Oh, that's assignment. More wine? No, no. I'd better stay coherent for Mr. Naziri. From the sound of things, even getting him to speak drunken English would be a bit of an achievement. <laughs> That's probably true. You know, I'd forgotten what a pleasant experience a candlelit dinner for two can be. I do hope. We can do it again? Yes. <laughs> well, I don't see why not. Oh, Bernard, I'm sorry, forgive me, that was very selfish. No, no, it's all right. It'd just be so nice if things could be straightforward. I mean, here with you, everything is so good. <laughs> Madeline, uh, I don't know how to say this exactly, but you know I'm married. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Franklin told me. You were talking about me? Yes. I wanted to know everything about you as soon as you arrived. Oh, that's, that's really nice. Please don't worry. If something's meant, then it'll happen. I, uh, I haven't that kind of luck. You've done this before? No, no, it, it, it's just... What? Oh, nothing. Oh, God. Naziri, I have to go. Oh. Thanks for supper. It was really, well, lovely. It's okay. 
See you tomorrow. Yeah, better go. Yeah. to spend some time with you. Do you think we could? Would it be possible? I don't see why not. We'd really better go. <laughs> How did it go? You're late. Well, you know, doctors, they think it could be a virus. In other words, they don't know. Then you're probably OK. You want me in for tests? When? Tomorrow. I've got a bed free. It'll only be a couple of days, I should think. Is there anything you want me to do? Well, uh, be a bit of shopping, that's all. Well, I'm going to bed. Don't go yet. It's always so rushed. Jenny, you've got the children to pick up. Is it always going to be like this? If only I could ring you when I needed to talk to you. No phone calls. It's too risky, even in college. Just, well, so difficult. When you love someone, you want to talk to them. I'll ring you about the next tutorial.
Yes, darling? Yes, dear? Hey, Paul, is your mother in? What do you want? Fancy watching another of these? No, thank you. It's really hot, this one. No, go away. Why? You got someone in there? No, I haven't. Well, not even Debbie. No. No, you haven't, have you? <laughs> what do you mean? I took her out last night. Why should I care? You don't, do you? She was telling me all about you. Not that there's much to tell, mind you. Virgin's Bleeding Convention. <laughs> hey, why don't you watch this? Something cool. Right tasty, that Debbie. Right tasty tart. <laughs> Go on. So Annie just doesn't like him? That's the impression she's giving. What about Keith? <laughs> <With> him? <laughs> I don't know what she sees in him. Sex, pure and simple. You try living with them, the noise they make. I mean, she's so hypocritical. If she thought I was spending a night with Terry, she'd go completely ape shit. So it's a night away that you want? No, a bed. <laughs> well, car seats and damp golf courses do have their limitations. Yeah, well, I guess I've always been lucky. I don't see how I can help you, really. But you can. You remember how I used to come and stay with you? Yes, not so much lately. Look, she wouldn't think it was odd. I don't like lying to her. Oh, for Christ's sake! Shush. She was married by my age. True. All right. <laughs> I'll think about it. Madame, the table is free. Oh, thanks. Is anything wrong? No. Nothing, nothing at all. It's just even here, I'm sure any minute Mrs. Franklin's gonna pop out from that tea room with another timetable for us. I wish... I wish we could be away somewhere. No people. Madeline, would you... I mean, if I found somewhere, would you come away with me for a weekend? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't. Uh, no, Bernard, no. Uh, that could so easily have sounded crude and, and it didn't. I think it sounds a lovely idea.
Yes. Yes. From the second to the fourth. Yes. Yes. I'll call back later. Edward Farrar. F A double R A R. Yes, please. <laughs> You said you'd prefer cash. Oh, that's very thoughtful of you, Mr. Farrar. I hope you have good weather. And don't worry about the cleaning. I'll do it when you've gone. Oh, and if there's anything you need, just ask. Right. Thank you. You've made a decision. Let me know. We'll talk about it then. All right. OK. Voila. Julian, thank you. Oh. I can't talk about this at the moment. I'm a student. I'm sorry. Oh, OK. Sorry. <laughs> Hi. Your essay. Oh. You thought Shelley was old hat? Yes, I did. I do. Shelley is a really modern poet. He's the most modern of them all. I thought he would have appealed. Well, he doesn't say a lot to me. He's writing about idealism, peace, love. So what? Well, isn't that still what young people want? I think they're more out for what they can get. Oh, no, surely. You're most likely anti-violence, for one thing, anti-war, anti-oppression. Those are hardly selfish issues. OK. <clears throat> Your views about his atheism? Well, no one I know believes in God anyway, so that's not such a big deal. Free love, then. You know, he was the one with all the ideas on open marriages long before they were fashionable. The pursuit of love was the dominant force in his life. Is it for you? It certainly is for me. It is for me too. I don't know many people my age who are into love. But I think love should be the most important thing. If you love someone, you can't have her. It makes me wanna. Oh, Madeline. Sorry to interrupt. This was left for you, didn't want you to miss it. Oh. It's from Mr. Hopkins, Bernard. Oh. Thanks. Always happy to play the messenger. <laughs> it's just the book list you left me, Mrs. Franklin. Oh. Uh. Sorry, Paul. What were you saying? We're talking about love. Would you excuse me a moment? Shelley, um... Oh. Oh. oh, what's the matter? Oh, please, oh, 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 please, Paul! Oh. Paul, oh, why have you got 
the knife. Give me the knife, Paul. Give me that. Paul, oh, give me the knife. Responsibility. I think it is. I think you're getting too involved, Madeline. We're not responsible for their personal habits. Give it back. And when does not being responsible become neglect, Julian? Sometimes you have to be involved. Not in my experience. Give it back. <laughs> Mr. Garrett's going to keep the knife, Paul. Paul, are you all right? Mandy? I've been thinking about you and Terry. And? Well, I don't like the idea of deceiving Annie. Oh, hang <laughs> on, hang on, I haven't finished. Are you in love with him? Oh, yes, he's fab. Okay. How do you fancy staying over the weekend with the second? With Terry? Mm -hmm. A weekend? Oh. What? Oh, Terry normally goes home at weekends. His mum's ill. Well, surely he can make an exception. You can tell Annie you're staying with me. Where are you going? It's my secret. <laughs> you mean I'm your alibi and you're mine? I'm your alibi, yeah. Oh, come on, where are you going?
So that's one nighty. One pair of single sheets, one pair oh, of... Oh, sorry, I want a double. I'm afraid you've got single. Oh, can I change them? Yes, of course. Thanks. you been? Why didn't you come yesterday? Or all the day before come to that? I waited all afternoon. Well, I had to finish an essay. Oh, and that was more important than your mother, I suppose. I've been ringing and ringing. Well, you're always on about the fees. Oh, so it's my fault, is it, Paul? Here are your magazines. And I bought you some grapes. You'll have to leave, I'm afraid, Mr. Grigson. Your mother has to have her injections now. You can wait outside if you like. No, it's all right. I'm going. Good night, Mum. I'll be back tomorrow. I promise. All right, Paul. Set then? Yeah. Is everything okay? Everything's fine. Put your finger in your mouth. Wet. 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 A friend moves in this evening. I'm leaving now. I just have to take this tutorial. I wish I was coming with you, though. It won't be long. See you later, then. Yeah. So, <clears throat> shall we go through your essay on the romantic imagination? Uh, I'm afraid it's not finished. Would you like to finish it now? Well, I'd rather finish it at home, if you don't mind. No, it's fine. You'll have to talk to her about this Terry. He's too old. Thank goodness he's away at weekends. Why don't you like him? Oh, I don't know. There's something about him. I'm sure he's married, you know. What are you doing this weekend? Oh, nothing much. Nice to have the place to ourselves for a change. Oh, come on. Okay. 
Have a lovely weekend. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I wish you'd tell me where you'll be. I'll be at home. I have my niece staying. Well, how are you? Julian, it's only me. I was just collecting something. Good lord. Uh, this young lady and I have a tutorial. You're right. What now do you think you're doing? I'm trying to get this your car. <coughs> you got a license? I've I've got to get somewhere. Not tonight, Sonny. <sighs>
Oh, hi. <laughs> you look different. Just my traveling clothes. Right. I'll help you. Thanks. Rose Red City, half as old as time. Mm. I don't think I know this one. Go on, try. It's familiar, but I can't place it. Uh, is it early 19th century? Well, 19th anyway. It's not Shelley, is it? You're right. It's not. Oh. Well, give us a clue then. Well, the author's scarcely known apart from that line. <laughs> Wonderful. That's really helpful. Um, no, it's no good. You're going to have to tell me. Well, the poem's called Petra. Written by a clergyman. For heaven's sake, I don't know. Just tell me. <laughs> The Reverend John William Burgon. Oh. Exactly. Totally unheard of, apart from that line. A bit like... One crowded hour of glorious life is worth an age without a name. Thomas Osbert Mordaunt. Hmm. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm here with you. So am I. Let's go upstairs. Emily Dickinson, eh? Mm hmm Aiming to catch up on some work? No, no. Goes with me everywhere, and it's got bits of my whole life in it, I suppose.
to live. Hi. Mm. This is nice. Yes. I never thought I'd feel like this again. Ben, please wait. I, I... I know what I'm doing. No.
And was there anyone on the staff he was particularly friendly with? Not as far as I know. Well, he, he had an invalid wife. Well, so we all thought. Mm. All the same, I'd better see everyone. As you wish. Oh, hello. No, it's all right, Madeline. Come in. Oh. <laughs> the inspector here wants to talk to everybody, so uh, perhaps you could be the first, if that's not a problem. Absolutely not. I was just looking to discuss the new timetables, but of course that can wait. It's all very terrible. I'll get Mrs. Franklin to bring us all some coffee. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Yaron. Mm. And for our records, Miss... Uh... Seven. Madeline Seven. For our records, Miss Seven, could you tell us where you were last weekend? Of course. I was at home. I had my niece staying. Cheltenham. 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 Gloucester. Mm -hmm. 